Sometimes when making a game, you'll want to find a way to take the movement of a mouse moving left, right, and up and down in your two-dimensional screen space and turn it into some kind of uh, relevant motion like in a three-dimensional space like this. And there is a neat little action called Screen to World Point, which will allow you to do just that. But before we uh, look at how to set that up, let's talk a little bit about the XY screen space. I'm going to start out with a couple actions in input called Get Mouse X and Get Mouse Y. And I've got a simple FSM setup where uh, I just look for a left mouse button down, so I'm only going to uh, do the stuff in this example when I'm pressing a left mouse button. And then uh, I've got a bunch of stuff set up here to convert the output that we get from the uh, get mouse X and Y into text so that we can see it on the screen. And I'm going to output it here to GUI text. So first of all, I will add a get mouse X and a get mouse Y right here at the top. And I've got some variables set up. I'm going to store the get mouse X result in a mouse x float variable. And I'm going to store the get mouse y in a mouse y variable. And let's take a look at what happens now. When I press down on my mouse button, I'm getting the output, it's right here, of x and y. And I've set that up so we can see what's going on. And if I come all the way down here to the left, you'll notice the numbers approach zero. And if I come up, on the left, we get a 1.0 in the Y, but we're still over here towards zero on the X. And it's just the opposite. If I come down here to the lower right corner with my mouse, we approach 1.0 with the X and zero with the Y. And so it'd stand to reason, this is one and one up in the upper right corner. And in the middle would be 0.5 and 0.5. So if I could get there, there we go. And uh, so it's like plotting a graph or a chart, right? From zero, zero down here, one to one up here. And that is how get mouse X and Y determine where you are located uh, with your mouse on the screen at any given time. Now this is called normalized coordinates. You don't have to use normalized coordinates. If I turn these off right here, check normalize, and we look again, this time I'm getting pixel information, right? So it's showing me that my screen over here towards the left is I'm capturing at 1280. If I come up to the top, I'm capturing 1280 by 720. The screen only goes to about 600 here, but of course, if I went up here, we'd reach that higher number. So that is uh, the difference. You can choose pixels or normalized. And why would you want normalized? Well, your players may be running uh, on different size screens. You know, Unity allows your player to choose how big they want the output to be. Uh, they can change the target resolution. So you may want to normalize, which uh, will always take care of the difference in screen sizes for you. So now that we have this information, what do we do with it? Let's take a look at that screen to world point action. Screen to world point is actually part of the camera set. And uh, you can go backwards, world to screen point too. But screen to world point is what we're going to talk about right now. Let me insert that. And we want it to be up here right after the get mouse y. And what we do is pass in either a vector or as we just captured up here, remember the x and y, we just captured two floats and stored them. So we can pass those back in here, uh, mouse x for screen x and mouse y for screen y. That tells this action what coordinates to use. And then it's going to translate these into 3D space uh, we do want to use normalized because we used that up, up here on the other ones. And then it will output for us a new set of either a vector or XYZ coordinates. And uh, we'll store these as move X and I'll call it move Y. Okay. So this will save uh, that data or translate that data and save it for us. And then to see the result of this, let's just do a, um, a set position. And we will, uh, so we have to do that after the screen to world point. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Uh, we are going to use, uh, I'm going to use this middle cube right here, which I've called middle cube. So we'll move that one. So right here, we'll be able to see the effect. And uh, I could, again, we could pass in a uh, vector three, or we could pass in individual floats. So since we're used storing X and Y, I'll put the move 
X and move Y in as those. And I want this to happen every frame because we're going to be updating this as we go. And I'll move it in world space. And let's take a look. Now, uh, as I click and move, well, we've got a little bit of something going on. It jumped it around, but let's see what the difference is. I think I forgot to set, uh, yep, every frame. So you can do this once or every frame. Sometimes you only want to get, like if you're doing more of an adventure game, you'll want to click once and maybe get the, the world point. Other times you want to do it all the time. And this is one of those times I want to do it all the time. So now I click and drag and my cube's moving around. We got something a little weird going on there, right? Because it's floating in space. Let's, let's see what that's about. Because if we look, um, oh, let me not maximize that. If we run the game and click, you can see my cube is floating right out here. And it's because we've told it to be a certain distance in. Let's look at that one more time. Screen to world point. Because remember, we've got an X and a Y, but we didn't specify a Z. And in this case, it's telling it to be a 1. We're just entering 1 away from the camera, right? Because remember, this is part of the camera set. So let's change that to be a 10, for instance, and see. Now, right, we've projected it in 10 units away from the camera, so it's, it's actually here in the middle of the screen where we can make sense of it. So let's look at that again large. And so I'm translating the X motion of my mouse to X motion of this cube, and I'm translating the Y motion of my mouse to the Y motion of this cube. So just in real time, I'm moving it around. And uh, once again, you'll see if I run it this way, if you watch, on this view, while I move, um, I'm only moving it up and down in this one plane. So it allows you to uh, get kind of 2D motion in a 3D space if you'd like to do that. And you can uh, swap that around. You know, once you got these numbers, you can do anything you want with it. You don't have to just move. Uh, for instance, just as a, let's just be silly real quick, I could swap the Y for the Z. Um, we'll do that uh, down here as well. Get rid of that. And let's see what happens. And now I'm moving it back and forth and left and right. So now I've changed the plane that I'm moving in, but I'm still getting it off of this X and Y coordinates. And you can do anything with this, these numbers. You can get creative. You don't have to use a set position. For instance, what if I wanted to instead rotate? Uh, let's put that right after the screen to world point. And let's rotate that cube instead and have a little fun with that. Middle cube. There we go. And, well, let's just start out with the move X and move Y and see what happens, right? Experimentation is the key. And remember, we'll do it every frame. And take a peek. And look, now I'm rotating the cube. Not very much because, as you remember, I'm only going from 0 to 1. So it's not a lot of rotation. And you can see as I move in Y, it's wiggling in, in the other axis. So I'd like to reverse those and increase the rotation amount. So let's play with that a little bit. Uh, one thing we can do is, uh, let's see. We look again. If I take a Y motion, I'm rotating that way. So how about we just swap those? So instead of move X, I'll do move Y. Instead of move Y, I'll do move X. So first things first, let's look there. And now, as I move up and down, the cube moves up and down. And as I move left and right, the cube moves left and right, but opposite of my mouse. So I want to fix that opposite, and I want to exaggerate the rotation. So let's add a couple of float multiplies, which I think will take care of both problems at once. So if I take the move x and move y, which are the two values we're using to rotate the cube, uh, and I will rotate, let's see, I'm rotating around the Y in the opposite direction. So let's do a negative 10. So that'll amplify uh, the rotational value by a significant amount, and it will invert it. And this one I'll just do 10 because I like the direction of that motion. So let's take a look once more. And now as I move, whoop, no, I got to swap that. I got it backwards. So let's do negative 10 and 10. And now I should have a cube that I look up and down when I rotate and I go left and right. So it's 
almost, almost like it's looking at my mouse, almost. It's not really. I'm just kind of faking that. But you can see where uh, you can get some pretty neat motion from things uh, just from playing with a few little numbers. So go ahead and experiment with that. Have a lot of fun and know that you can use get mouse X and Y to pull the X and Y coordinates from there. And you can use screen to world point to turn that into a 3D space. And remember, if you want to go in the other direction, world to screen point does just the opposite. You pass in a world point and it will give you an X, Y value on the way out. So you can have objects that will move things, say for a two-dimensional HUD, based upon three-dimensional activity in your scene.